If you play Apex on PC, odds are that you've tinkered with at least one or most of your graphics settings. Going through the video tab, possibly lowering your graphics settings and turn off VSync if you're a more experienced PC player, and then left it at that. This guide will take you to another level and explain how to set up your PC to not only get more consistent and fluent gameplay, but also significantly lower your input lag. Because even though it may not seem like it, Apex Legends is a pretty heavy game to run, and it's hard to keep consistent high frames even with the average mid to high end PCs. Thankfully, content creator Starflame took it upon himself to create a full guide on how to squeeze those frames out of Apex with the best Apex Legends settings in 2022. Make sure to check him out after this video. He also posted his guide on Reddit, and we're going to use that post as a source, and I'm going to obviously link that in the comments. Before we head into the actual settings, I do want to stress that the most important factor is having stable frames. There's no point in your PC reaching 240 frames a second if you can't keep it, since the game and your sensitivity feels completely different depending on your frames per second. If you peak 240 frames, but it bottoms out at, let's say, 120 frames, you want to limit your frame rate to 120 for consistency's sake. More on how to limit your frame rate later on. Hopefully this guide will help you to raise that bottom FPS or maybe even let you cap out to your monitor's refresh rate without dropping frames, and then lowering your input lag for even better performance. Starflame also clarifies that not having an FPS cap will give you the lowest input lag, but it will cause tearing and make the game feel janky. They clarify that you should follow this guide unless you get over 500 FPS. He also doubles down on what I said about the FPS cap, saying that maxing out your graphics card or CPU also will cause significant input lag, which is another reason you should cap your FPS to a reasonable degree. These points are all under the assumption that the guide will bring you past your own refresh rate, the hertz being equal to frames per second. If it won't, this advice doesn't necessarily matter. The purpose of this guide isn't primarily to raise your frames per second, which can easily be done just by lowering your graphics, your resolution, checking your background processes, or replacing computer components. But instead, we're going to focus on how to squeeze extra performance out of your computer and give you that consistent frame rate with low input lag to give you an edge on the battlefield. This guide is made with NVIDIA graphics cards in mind, as you are going to be using both G-Sync and NVIDIA Reflex. And honestly, I can't give you more than basic tweaks if you are on, uh, say, AMD graphics card. You're obviously also going to need a monitor which supports G-Sync, which as of not too long ago includes any monitor that previously only supported FreeSync. In NVIDIA's term, these are now called G-Sync compatible. Also, some of you might be aware of the micro stutter you received when you got past 180 frames per second. This was fixed a while ago, and you can now safely go all the way up to 240 and above. So let's dive into how exactly we're going to do that. Let's start with enabling and setting up G-Sync to work properly. If you're already holding high stable frame rates, you probably won't feel too much benefit, and personally having G-Sync on feels more floaty and less responsive than just having it off. But some users have reported seeing a benefit, so it comes down to what performance you have. If you don't have the NVIDIA control panel, start by downloading it. If you don't have it, you can download this in the Windows 10 store. Open it and enable G-Sync. In the NVIDIA control panel, you should see Setup G-Sync under the display menu on the left side. If you don't see Setup G-Sync as an option, and you're sure it's enabled by your monitor, you might need to install drivers for your monitor manually. If your monitor doesn't have G-Sync, but does have FreeSync, these are now com compatible with each other. Mine didn't work at first, but I went into the monitor settings and enabled FreeSync to get the option in the control panel to show up. Make sure to check Enable G-Sync, G-Sync compatible, and enable it for windowed and full screen mode. Next up, click Manage 3D settings on the left, click on the tab and go to Program Settings. When selecting a program to capture, choose r5apex.exe. If it's not there, click Add and select Apex Legends. When adjusting these settings, you want to make sure to input the following. Anti-aliasing, you want to set that to off. Anti-aliasing mode to off. CUDA GPUs all. Low latency mode on, not ultra, as this causes issues. Monitor technology, G-Sync or G-Sync compatible. Multi-frame simple AA. Off. OpenGL rendering GPU, your graphics card. Power management mode, prefer maximum performance. Preferred refresh rate, highest available. Shader cache on. Texture filtering on, texture filtering and negative LED bias allow, texture filtering quality, high performance, texture filtering trilinear optimization on, threaded optimization on, triple buffering off, vertical sync on. You're going to want to turn vertical sync on here in the control panel, but once you get to Apex, you will turn it off. You need V-Sync for G-Sync to work, as it will kick in if you go past your monitor's refresh rate, but for whatever reason, you get the best results if it's enabled in NVIDIA control panel, but disabled in Apex. If you don't have any of these options, just skip it. Make sure that it looks basically like this. Also, when you're looking at your in-game settings, you'd go to the video tab, you want to make sure they look something like this. 
with your V-Sync disabled, NVIDIA Reflex enabled, nothing else. Adaptive resolution FPS target to zero. Anti-aliasing none. Texture streaming budget, this depends on your graphics card. I usually set it to about two gigabytes under the maximum VRAM. Texture filtering, I set that to 16x because my graphics card, you can have it on 8 or even lower. Ambient occlusion quality disabled, sun shadow coverage low, shadow detail low, spot shadow detail very high, it doesn't really matter. Volumetric lighting disabled, dynamic spot shadows enabled, model detail low, effects detail medium, impact marks high, ragdolls medium. If you are struggling with your FPS and you want to squeeze even more out, you can lower effects detail to low, you can lower ragdolls to low. Impact marks are actually good to have because it shows, you know, where gunshots hit the wall and stuff and it doesn't really impact your performance probably at all. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. In addition to all of this, you need to change your videoconfig.txt file, which you can download here. I will link it in the description. The file is found under users, your username, saved games, respawn, apex, local. Make sure to change it to your own resolution and set the file to read only by right clicking it, clicking properties and checking the read only box. This stops Apex from automatically overriding the settings. After that, open your advanced launch options and add the command plus FPS underscore max zero to uncap your FPS. We are instead going to limit the FPS using something called RTSS for better input lag. On Origin, you can do this by right clicking Apex, pressing properties, hitting advanced launch options, and there you have it. On Steam, you can accomplish this by right clicking Apex in your library, pressing properties, and then filling out the launch options. So you're going to want RTSS to limit your frames. RTSS is the best option to do this since you can limit your frame rate with the most stable frame time compared to its competitors. FPS underscore max causes janky and unstable frame rates with way more input lag than RTSS. It's hard to show in a video, but here is a comparison between using FPS underscore max and RTSS in game. You want the frame time to be as smooth and as low as possible. That's a green line. After unzipping and installing, all you need to do is run RTSS. Make sure to add R5 Apex by clicking the green Add button, navigating to where Apex is installed and choosing R5 Apex. You then limit the frame rate on the right side of RTSS under the frame rate limit. Like I previously mentioned, you want to set it to your lowest FPS. If your FPS matches or goes past your screen refresh rate, you limit the FPS 3 to 5 frames under your monitor's max refresh rate. If your monitor caps your FPS under the screen refresh rate, change the RTSS cap to match it. Let's say you have a 144Hz monitor, but you're only pulling 138 frames. Make sure to cap it the same. This setup will give you more stable frames and allow you to have a more competitive gaming setup. As I mentioned, I personally don't use G-Sync as I personally feel it feels off, but it supposedly feels good if you are on lower frames. And as such can be considered personal preference. Give it a try and let me know what you think. If you are running screen recording or any overlay app such as OBS or Discord to record or stream your gameplay, you have to set up Apex to run as an administrator. To do this, navigate to your Apex installation and right click r5apex.exe, press properties, navigate to the compatibility tab and check the run this program as an administrator. Create a shortcut of r5 Apex and place it on your desktop. Then you will need to do the same for Origin or Steam, whichever you installed Apex on. Then whenever you open Apex, you do so by clicking the shortcut on your desktop. You'll know if this works when you get two administrator prompts when trying to launch Apex. One for Origin or Steam, and then one for Apex. Once again, huge props to Starflame for letting me use this guide for a video so it could reach you all. Really hoping that this will increase your performance. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.